my name is Dan. We're doing a little bit of game dev today. Uh, I've just been working through the old code, cleaning, uh, deleting some stuff. I'm trying to just remember the flow of the dungeon. Uh, it's been quite nice doing it, chill. Just chucked on some music, so I plan to just carry on doing that for now. So um, yeah. Okay, let's move on then. Yeah. I need to uh, turn down the monitor a little bit. The mic is picking it up and I don't want it to. It is a new shirt. I've worn it all day, Alicia, if you only just noticed. <laughs> she notices me as I walk around the house and bring her food and drink. And... Or are you just pointing it out on stream? You're trying to be a nice and... Oh. Oh. Spacey, she's telling you something. And the stream elements, listen up. Alicia's telling you something. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I was working through, I've got a little, my document op over here. Uh, just trying to do a bit of a logic map of where things are, are kind of stored. So just finishing off these dungeon states, I'm literally kind of at the end of this now, which is good. So I'm in the cleanup dungeon state. So I've written some notes before about what it does, but uh, I'm just double checking because the thing with documentation is it gets out of date. And there's been a few things in here that I, I removed, so... Uh, yeah, let's, uh, we'll, we'll assume it, most of it's correct, but we'll have a double check on the logic. So, first off, what does it call when it's done? It's idle dungeon state, pretty sure. Okay, so we call this one. That's good. Okay, so what it apparently does is binds to delegate to know when the stats have finished being uploaded. Okay, so I... Is there a, a, a chance that we could get that back before this state is hit? Or no, because we upload the dungeon stats afterwards. That's fine. So we're getting rid of all this old AI controller. We can look at the file history if we if we need to. But there was just a lot of uh, spam in the in the logic here, so we, we've just changed it around. Hey, upside younger, welcome, welcome. Uh. I'm guessing this is a to-do. No, I'm going to say maybe. Change message and show the dungeon notification state and your adventure approaches. You should do this at the start and your dungeon run. Otherwise, yeah. I think we've already done this. Uh, so we have no adventure. I think that's a, a to do. Let's just uh, leave that in for now because I don't think we, we've done that properly. That's okay though. Um, so what does it do? We bind to the dungeons on upload stats acknowledged. Let's write this. I don't need to say what it does because the name of it is meaningful. Um, then we uh, triggers uploading uh, upload of dungeon stats. Um. So we trigger the update of them by there, and then we clean the dungeon. So trigger upload, let's have a look what this does. A time to the callback. Oh, this is a simulate though. Ooh. This is bad, isn't it? Surely we don't need to do this anymore. We bind a lambda. Oh, no, 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 we do it after two seconds. That is totally fine. I don't think that comment serves any purpose. Neither does that. We've got that elsewhere. Okay, so let's have a look in. Let's follow this through for just a moment. Upload dungeon stats just checks if it's bound. And it broadcasts that. Uh, what listens for this then? 
Let's have a little peep for them. Okay. We are adding a dynamic here in the cleanup dungeon. Oh, so we, we... Hold on. Is this all fake then? No, hang on, I'm confused a sec. So we've, at the moment, we're just faking it, right? We're giving it a two seconds to upload it. We may not even need this anymore based on how we send it. So we might need to check it's actually doing it. I think a lot of those me thinking ahead, thinking we might, you know, we'll need a bit of time to cover this. But now that we've got the communication between the API and, and the code set up, we actually know when this stuff is done. Okay. Uh, oh God, so there's some... Hold on. Did I go to the wrong... Ah, it calls it on the dungeon. Right, okay, yeah. So it's a dungeon function. And then we call cleanup on it. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I didn't realise I jumped to a different file when I was doing that then. So, literally on this, we just set up a timer and call it after two seconds. And all it does is to simulate. That's important. Um, change this to a real delegate. The moment. It's just a two minute, uh, two second timer. Okay, let's leave that like that. So after that, it's going to go ahead and call this, right? And then this just broadcasts the thing so that the state can listen in, uh, to it, right? So the state will listen back then. Um, where are we? We are in the cleanup dungeon state. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. thanks, Spacey. Funny you noticed. My curtains are creating quite a bit of uh, brightness on my face. It's a little bit, but still a bit bright. Uh, okay. So the thing that binds to it is this, right? So uh, this ends up calling Reset dungeon stats. Feels a bit weird that we're doing it in there. Uh, let's not lose too much time here, but let's. Uh... Yeah, I'm trying to add quite a few to do's. But is uploading state is complete, which is going to allow our state to finish on the tick, right? Uh, on our update, sorry. Is state complete? Uh, at the moment, that is just is upload. That's all. We don't need that. Okay. Yeah, random as well. So what's this like if using independent dungeon adventure? Oh, this was the idea of, I remember. So the idea is that your adventure could exist in the world and they have to run from the world to get to the dungeon and then they would go back into the world. So that'd be like a persistent one. Whereas an independent one would be if we just have an adventure, just the dungeon and they run off the screen, despawn, and then they, they spawn back in their village, you know, and, and we just use a different, model. I think that's probably the better way to do it. So this was... Yeah, I don't think we're... So this is... Yeah... Use the world adventures as dungeon adventures. Oh no. Okay, okay. We'll leave that in for now, I don't mind that. Okay, so cleanup dungeon state is done as well. So what does cleanup do in here? It goes through all of the rooms in our dungeon. Okay, let's Get our dock open a sec, see what we actually did. 
Trigger uploaded dungeon stance. It's just a simulated timer in dungeon. Get rid of that. Clear down the dungeon, deleting the rooms. Destroys current adventure. Okay, yeah, that, that, that's worth remembering. Okay, so uh, let's just see what it does in here. So it goes through, it calls clean up and destroys. Not just clears them, it destroys them too. Uh, deleting. Clear down the dungeon, deleting the rooms. Yeah, okay, we did state that. Well, okay, and then the final state that we go into, well, let's see if there's any other functions in here that we're not using, actually. Oh, this is dungeon. I keep doing that because we're calling into dungeon. Clean up dungeon state. I think that's everything in here, right? Uh, yep. Okay, I'm happy with that. And then let's go to the final one, which is our idle dungeon state. So this is what it sits in when waiting for the next adventure. This one's super straightforward, which is nice. Uh, we basically note the... When we enter the idle, we notify that the dungeon is has been finished. Uh, so what is it that's waiting for that? Tell the dungeon that the dungeon is finished. So I, I just... We don't need to store it. It's as simple as that. And then the, I think the dungeon manually will change the state, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so does the dungeon care about this? Uh, this should have three at the bottom. Cached game mode on dungeon. Okay. And what does that do? Is dungeon run active? Okay, so that feeds back into our game, our overall game uh, finite state machine. All right, that's good. That's good. We, it's important we know that. Um, tells dungeon uh, run is complete, which notifies the game state's um, finite state machine. Okay. So it's finished, uh, it never does. Transitions, uh, dungeon will manually switch back to uh, the, the, the setup dungeon state. Okay. Okay, nice, nice, nice. All right, I'm happy that I've gone through that anyway. So that's the start. First off, I guess we should probably clean up. Uh, well, first off, make sure it runs. So let's go back uh, into here. Let's close it, let's compile it, and then we'll, we'll get that uploaded if that's the case. Just because I've done a bit of cleanup as I go along. I should actually make the most of bookmarks in this project. I haven't used any yet, but there's going to be a certain bits that I do care about. Like, uh, I guess with the dungeon, the init dungeon run, it's probably the setup new dungeon get called from. Oh, I think that's from within the, the state, right? Yeah, so this will be setup new dungeon. This is where we create the new rooms. Yeah. Okay. So let's just put in a, a bookmark here. I think it's Control KK. Yeah. So this will be uh, create uh, or spawn dun spawn new dungeon rooms. Okay. Let's get that across there. Can we make this? To be honest, the line number isn't so relevant to me. Yeah, it's probably more important for me to get. that in okay that's good okay so it did succeed great let's go ahead and do it now Elisha's a hacker these days and she does she uses source tree and updates the repo for the little bot so this bit she'll actually understand 
We can go in here and have a look at the files that I've changed, make sure that I'm happy with them. Deleted comments pretty much. And the white spaces that we didn't need. And I've gone through each of the dungeon states and I've deleted comments that were in here. Uh, is any of these not a dungeon state? No, they're all dungeon states. Okay, good. What do we change? Oh yeah, some of them had functions removed. That's where the dot H is in there. Great, okay. Uh, cleaned up the dungeon states by removing uh, commenting code. Okay, so we stage all. Uh, we can now hit commit. Let's push that. Ta-da! Okay. <sighs> All right. That is that bit done. Okay, so let's... I want to go back to that game state. I think that was a good natural point for us to go to. So notify... Um, this one okay so game mode game so we need to i want to follow this logic through this whole game state in here it's not that many lines so let's go ahead and get some notes right in on this shall we so our game state then i think i'm kind of low on pages which is why i'm doing this all in one page but it's a shame in a way because i kind of want to collapse this Does it let you do like a collapsible? I can't remember how it works. I guess we can just do a, 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 a horizontal rule. Yes, one horizontal rule to rule them all. Okay. Um, I also feel that the game state would probably come above it. So let's whack that in because that's the overarching uh, flow control. Okay, so let's go, we're going for this. This is going to be the game state. Okay, so in our HA game, oh no, it's a game mode, not game state. It is, which means this was wrong. The game modes. Okay. Placed in the level, uh, it goes through duration of the game. No dungeon is called to kick off the dungeon finite state. Uh, tick handle the dungeon's finite state machine. Okay, that was important. Okay. So, what have we got in here then? In our beautiful game mode, let's go back to the game mode. Let's have a butchers here. Uh, we've got some members in there, don't worry about that. So when we start, we find the dungeon from the world. Okay, okay, that's interesting. So we source it by calling our get all actors of type sort of thing. Uh, same with the object, you access the subclass instance. Don't know why I've got that coming in there. Did I copy it from elsewhere? Maybe, who knows? Okay. So we find the dungeon from the world. Okay, so this will uh, source the dungeon from the world. Let's just say level. We could do that the other way around, but that I think this is fine. All right, so. And that is fine. So then we start game flow. We don't call that yet. So I'm not too sure when we do call that. Why, hello there, Pollerin. Welcome, welcome, lovely to see you. And welcome along to your raiders as well. Uh, I'm just uh, running through my existing code for AHA2 at the moment, trying to uh, get a, a better picture so I can do the next bits of logic. So the next objectives generally are to add card drops 
into the or item drops into the dungeon and uh, to work on the dungeon uh, monster spawning algorithm to make it more challenging because it's a bit face roll at the moment uh, and then to make sure that we're sending the right stats at the end because at the moment people are on like minus gold and stuff so something's going wrong but there we go that's what i'm doing uh but yeah just chilling out got a bit of nice music on going through some some code that i wrote a long time ago and cleaning things up as well oh and just on the back of another raid hello there pans gaming I'll repeat myself because literally a minute ago I just got a lovely raid from Polarin as well. Welcome. Lovely to see you. Pans Gaming, a member of the Welsh Gaming Network for anyone else who's uh, come across some of my other Welsh Gaming Network streamers. Um, what were you up to on stream, Pans? Hope you're all doing good. Yeah, no problem, Polarin. Go, 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 go. Uh, so I'm working on AHA2. AHA2 is a stream overlay game. If you want to know a little bit more about it, uh, well, you can see what the old one was like there, and I'll give you a little clip, but uh, essentially, I guess I'll launch it and give you a little bit of a preview. But I'm working on a stream overlay game, basically an application that I would then put in OBS and green screen out some of it so I can, you can still see my screen. Um, and then the idea is that people from chat go into a dungeon um, and try and get loot, and try and collect cards, try and become the most famous person in their kingdom. Uh, it, I've done it before, uh, but I did it in Unity, so we've had a bit of a community project to get it running in Unreal with a proper web server and all of that uh, kind of fancy stuff, which is nice. So yeah, currently working on that, but li little by little, but we are making progress. Old school RuneScape, you're back on it. Uh, we got some stream game fans coming across some stream raiders. Ah, lovely. All right, well, I'll, I'll give a show because mine's better than stream raiders. Not yet, but it is. Um, <laughs> as you can see from the, I, I, I mean, stream writers is fine. There's plenty to do there, which is good. I'm only kidding. However, I do constantly feel like, oh, I can do better. Uh, it's just, I'm, I don't find enough energy to, 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 to continue doing it. But, um, to give a, a rough estimate, this is in early phase now, but, uh, let, let me just get us in here and let's, uh, start the game flow. The idea would be, if you imagine this full screen, is it'll choose someone from the dungeon and uh, from our chat to get uh, chosen to go in and they go through and they fight monsters there's potions in there and there's little chests where they'll get gold or they'll find items which they can use to uh, unlock different outfits for their character so you can get like archer outfits and knight outfits and all, all the likes and then at the bottom i'm in the way at the moment at the end of it is like the treasury where you get the loot so again it'll choose someone from chat now so it's chosen nightmare joker 2 and there you go, you go and fight the monsters. So obviously imagine more animations and stuff like that. And you can interact with it by chatting things. If you want, you can say like, oh, let's add a potion in for him. And then it adds a drop of potion in into a random slot if there's room. Uh, you can also be nasty and add a monster. So if I do that, it adds a monster into that last slot there. Uh, so now they've got to fight that before they get to the end. But the idea is you join a kingdom and every time you compete in the dungeon you earn fame which will raise your kingdom's fame and the kingdoms are all competing against each other to be the most famous. But within each dungeon, each adventure is competing to be the most famous so that they can be king or queen of their kingdom. So that's the general premise of it anyway. And then there's quests which are like group quests where... Uh, it'll be announced and everyone in chat joins it and it'll go off into this wonderful 3D world that we've kicked together. So this obviously isn't the wonderful 3D world, but if I jump into my other level quickly, you can have a little look at... Um, oh, it's got, it's got to <laughs> do a, a, a bit of texture rendering a sec. But I'll fly you around. Oh, look how lagged I'm going while Unreal does uh, its thing. Where's my floor texture gone? There we go. Okay. So yeah, you get an idea that imagine each one of these being a different kingdom that you can join and all the people from the kingdom will like idle outside of it. But then when a quest comes up, there'll be like monsters coming over this hill and there's a battle that will take place like over here. Uh, we, the, all the adventures band together. And if the adventures fail, the monsters go on and attack a specific kingdom. Um, and if they succeed, then the adventurers... Uh, get some special loot or one of the adventurers on the quest will get a special loot and obviously the kingdom uh, you, you earn fame from being brave and fighting against it so yeah that's the general premise of it anyway um, there is also some talk of a little arena where you you'll get pets from in the dungeon run uh, 
and you can well you'll get eggs and eggs can turn into pets and then uh they can be some pet contests in this arena that we've got over here as well so yeah lots of ideas uh just need to keep on plowing with it nice to see you mamba by the way mamba is uh, an individual who's put a ton of work into helping with the back end side of things with the database but yeah, that gives you an idea of it anyway. So I'm going to crack on, but you're all welcome here. Any questions, do ask away in chat. Uh, I stream every Monday from 6 till around 8 p.m. 7 till around 9 p.m., sorry. I know my stream schedule. I know it. All right, so uh, let's get an eye on this game state. So game mode, sorry, is where we were, right? Where is my game mode gone? It is pinned up here. Okay, let's get rid of some of these. Okay, so we get that. That's not a problem. Start game flow. I guess this is what... Start game flow is what kicks it in. This is what I call, uh, like, from the cheat menu at the moment, the start game flow, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, whereas no, that could be a UI or a, or a web request from a... a a website we can click it and then if the game's running it'll try and start the game for example uh but okay our quest enabled if they are then it'll sort out the next quest time okay that, that that's fine quest interview duration okay that works uh it'll set up the ui and decide the next game activity so setup UI will go ahead and use one of these. Okay, so that, that, that's just the, I guess, by default UI. No, this is on start. Yeah, we got to keep that in mind. Okay, let's go back. So it does that and then it'll decide the next game activity. So that's one of the key functions in here. Okay. I like that. Maybe we should just call it game actually. The game fun at same machine. Okay. That's fine. Uh I don't think anything else will will call this function if I recall correctly. I think it's purely from that. Oh, dungeon run complete as well. That makes sense. Like, yeah. So start game flow is our only way of starting in the moment. A fun fact: chickens can put eggs, even if unfertilized. Do you, like they lay eggs. You mean that? Is, that is, isn't that the, the hopefully. Most of the eggs we eat are unfertilized eggs. Maybe. Otherwise, it'd be quite a, a, a less pleasant egg experience. How you doing, Anakin? <laughs> okay, so start game flow is where it starts. Oh yeah, we want to go ahead and add some breakpoints in, right? So let's go, not breakpoints, bookmarks. Yeah, so let's rename this one. This is our game finite state machine. Okay, that is good. It was a fun fact, not if, you, sorry, you're completely correct. I had a, I had a, a hoot reading that. Absolute blast. Okay, so these are our debug commands. So that we should also state that, right? How's his debug commands? Okay. That is fine. And then Troy plays potion. Okay, yeah, so we end up having a lot of the logic is in here. Which is a bit surprising when you think about it. Try place potion is on the game mode. 
I guess it's because we, yeah, we had to put it in here because we need to query this stuff. Well, I d you could always just query the game mode, but either way, you either call it in here or you have it elsewhere and it needs to query the game mode to know if there's a dungeon run active, right? So this will, this will, it also handles, handles uh, chat commands. Uh, incoming. Yeah, that, that, that's enough, actually. Hello, the Bizarro. Nice to see you. Okay, so... the try place potion just come from here? No, 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 it doesn't. It skips it. Okay, that's cool. Okay, try place monster, try assassinate. That, that makes sense as well. Okay, so we, we do a bit of setup UI. What does this do? So we get our HUD. Does this not get set anywhere else? Nope, that's fine. So if that is valid, then we want to go ahead. So we can minimize this a bit. Oh, no, no, no. That's not how it works with those ones. Of course not. Sorry. Okay. Then we want to go widget container. You might be able to do it like that, actually, but I've, I've not done it before. Okay. So... All we're doing is set invisibility of stuff. It's not much of a, a setup, is it? I guess. So I don't think we really need to talk about that. Okay, so the decide game, next game of safety, we get the current time. Uh, our quests enabled and can start new quests. So. Yeah, I've done I've done this logic before. I'm not going to run through it. I'm going to trust that that works. So then we generate a new quests. So I've done quite a bit ready for quests for when we actually do quests, which is nice. I remember I went through and set up a little framework for it and the structs, which uh, have all the different quests already done. We just don't have the logic to get like an adventurous spawn for each one and have them fight and stuff. But that's okay. It's a nice platform to work off. Uh, how long did you have your beardy for, Bizarro? Okay. Okay, so we, we basically do sign-ups, and then if quests are enabled, and is quest sign-up active, uh, and then we have our quest sign-up close time. The current time is greater than that. It should be greater than equal to... Yeah, let's do great and then give people a bit more time. I mean, what's the chances? Anyway, it doesn't matter. No, no, I think this would be better. Because in that rare chance, it means that we don't have another dungeon before the quest starts. So if n none of those are true, so if they are true, we will start the quest. So start quest, sign up. What does this do? Nothing. Okay, so this is a to do. That's fine. Stop after a countdown. Yeah, we could do it on a timer uh, rather than just on the update tick, but it's not a biggie. It's not a biggie. Okay, that's fine. We're down with that. And then start new quests. This uh, in future create logic is that the actual quest. Yeah, we don't have to say in the future. I assume if it's to do, um, we haven't done it yet, right? Okay, that is fine. Hello there, Merlin. Nice to see you. Always good to see you. Uh, better yet, you ignore requests instead of t uh, telling us to accept them. Let me try and think what that was relative to. Sorry, Mr. Mamba. Was that based on the... 
the quest commands. Hmm. Maybe, maybe that was what it was for. You know, for about seven years. Okay, that's not. Uh, that's not too bad, is it? And also, you're saying that you worked uh, a long. That's a big week. That's like double a normal week. Was it a lot of pressure on in work, Zaria? And Merlin, what's new with you then, sir? It's always good to see you. Okay, uh, let, let's carry on with where we were at. We, we go through here. We got the debug command. So a lot of this actually isn't too too important. Um. A lot of these we can just probably minimize down because we know what they are, and it'll make navigating through here a bit. So I wanted to understand the these a little bit. Where are they actually called from? So from the AHA, ah, uh, there we go. That makes more sense. Yeah, it does make sense. Okay, so we will uh, place that down in here. This is the sort of stuff I forget often is this flow of like where what is responsible for what. So the subsystem is responsible for um uh, we will go through this properly in a bit, but um binding to the WebSocket events and passing for and handling them. Okay, just uh, for now. Okay, that, that's cool. Let's go back to where we were then. Okay, cool. So we start a new quest. If not, we start a new dungeon run. Okay, good. Yeah, and that error, I was going to say, this shouldn't be possible. So we start, kicks off the new dungeon run. That's fine. Um... These we will leave those open because we may care about those. Set of UI, it's fine. Uh, we're happy with this now. So dungeon run complete. Decide next that that is just our way of looping around. That's fine. Get our dungeon. That's a simple getter. We don't care about that. Enable dungeon runs. Is that like blueprint callable? Ah, okay. So it's something I can just do via that. That makes sense. Um, part of me feels if it's one of those we should whack it up with the rest of the debug functions. Personally, I'm a fan of trying to keep some level of logic in terms of the order of functions. Okay, that's good with me. Let's go back down. Okay, again, that's fine. Find dungeon from world, that's fine. We can leave that there. Start dungeon run. Okay, so this is that our main uh, kind of kicking off the dungeon. Nothing special in there. We've gone into init dungeon, so we know what that does now. That's good. Start quest signups. That's a to do. Generate new quest. So this is where I, I made a quest info already, which has like the target kingdom, the theme of the quest. The theme of the quest is the thing that has the title and a description and uh yeah whether or not it's a boss quest we haven't had those before what are they gonna be oh such such mystery uh looking quest let's choose one randomly does it actually do that at the moment yeah we don't need a comment to say that it actually does that oh i think it's always dangladesh at the moment Okay, that's fine by me. Okay, yeah, we're meant to select a theme as well. Do it. Did we not make that function? Maybe we didn't make that function yet. Oh, is the is the music coming through? I apologize. Uh, yeah, it. I haven't even processed what noise you're hearing. Sorry, that was two minutes ago.
Uh, yeah, short deadline and some unforeseen stumbling blocks, but I love the pressure. I yeah, I like I said, I find myself working good when I'm a bit under the pressure a bit, actually. Well, it does kind of exhaust you, but I, I love not having to look for motivation, you know? At the moment, I find work is a bit like that. It's not, not pressure, but it's just this constant stuff to do. That I battle to get my daily kind of what I need to get done in a day done. Uh, it's not because I got too much work. It's just because it's like uh, I'm trying to do a, a bunch of things on top of what I'm meant to do at my own kind of choice and kind of pushing to to uh, better myself in my role, if you will. Uh, and it's good because I'm in a position where I can actually like support people and like I'm, I do code reviews for all the juniors uh, and kind of like teach them a bunch of stuff, which I enjoy. But as a result, yeah, it's I'm definitely struggling to get everything done. Yeah, it's one of those spaces. It's warm. I normally would wear headphones, but if I wear these chunkers, look at them. Then I'm immediately going to just get hot and bothered. Uh, I'm not very good. Uh, I'm not very good at uh, getting warm. I get stressed. You may have heard a siren as well if it wasn't the music because my window is open. Anyway, okay, cool. Start quest signups is uh, to do. So, so it gets us a new quest. That's fine. Start new quest uh, to do. Create logic. Start the actual quest. That's fine. Get minimum quest monsters. Enhance that quest. Okay. I mean, this is. Uh, so we would probably want to to do this to develop a settings. I feel. So these to-dos, the idea of these to-dos I'm doing now is if I'm sat on my laptop downstairs and I want to crack on with something, I can just look through my to-dos in the project. Did you know brain means crows in Welsh? No, I did not. Hello there, brainoid. Okay, cool. So we're good with the game mode as well. It doesn't actually do a great deal as much as it's quite a hefty class. So maybe it should be processes. Processes in ch uh, chat commands from the AHA subsystem. Okay. Uh, it's mentally exhausting, said Bizarre. I had to keep track of so many things that need to make changes to and not forget uh, what I did. It's across 32 repos and I find someone made changes to a repo and have to merge and read. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm currently doing a little bit of like uh, multi-stream or, or branch kind of work. In, uh, I'm updating uh, engine on a project. We've got to go from uh, like pre 4.2 20, sorry, up to the latest version. Um, so yeah, I'm having to bounce between our kind of mainline, our uh, kind of merge stream, and then the latest engine version that we're merging in. Uh, so that's been quite a good bit of a learning experience for me. In Perforce, that is. Give me Perforce, I feel a lot more confident than bloody Git stuff. But there we go. You are the Welsh. You can be the Welsh captain now. You can look at me. You can do that if you want. I'll allow it. Okay, so sources and that that's less important. But I will will maybe I'll put it at the bottom. I don't want to be the first thing we read there. Design by the state machine it has its debug commands. Yeah, and then I think this should go higher because that's more important than that. Okay, cool. Um. So this would include like choosing quests. 
um, initiates new dungeon runs, manages uh, quest state machine, and uh, creates uh, responsible for quest uh, creation and sign up. So let's just, uh, I guess that'll do the job. Okay. Captain can right we <laughs> and detard. Our client asked for some front end performance stats and we didn't have any. So we designed metrics uh, for our stack and I had built it into every, oh, okay. Sounds like some important work, Bizarria. Is the client happy at least, do you know? And do you get any time back or anything like that? D-U-N, done. <laughs> done you are, that's how we spell it. Okay, good. Uh, so we're kind of happy with that. I did, hang on, I did have this document knocking around. I actually had... Um, stuff about the implementation. Got a really weird view on my Google Docs at the moment. Never mind. Uh, sorry, this is off screen. I won't be long. Do do do. I'm so confused. Why is why is this view so buggered up? Um, page view. Um, print layout. Let me show you what's weird, <laughs> what I'm struggling with. So I've got like a, the old AHA document in here, right? And can you see like, I've got this list here and then what, what's going on here? I like the, the text just goes off at the bottom. Is this all in the header? Why is all this in the header? Oh, did I accidentally paste it into the header or something like that? Or into the footer? Maybe I did that accidentally. Okay. That's fine. Implementation stuff. Okay, yeah, this is fine. This is what I was looking for. It was all my own fault is basically what we're saying. Okay, so one thing we probably want to know a little bit about is the 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 pawn uh, hierarchy as well. So let's go ahead and add in our little horizontal rule here. This is uh, super quick, this bit. It doesn't need much. So this is just going to be our pawns. And then we've got... Uh, yeah, I mean, let's copy this in and then reduce it down a bit. We don't need this much written about them. So, so yeah, this is our, it's our uh, kind of format, I guess. Okay, so our sprite porn, uh, Creates a sense of capture. I don't know if we need all of this detail. Piece of paper sprite component, we know all that. Yeah, so that's more important. Uh, so I guess we can just have like, has a capsule, a paper sprite component, um, text renderer, and a health component. I think it's currently unused health component. Okay, that means we get rid of that. Let's uh, whack these into bullet points as well. Move to location. Yeah, that's fine. Is controller following status idle? Current way of knowing if they have stopped. Have we still got that? So let's go into our porn class at the moment. 
I think they're called sprite pawns, aren't they? Sorry. Um, before tea break, I was implementing a recursive function which tries to find node n nodes away from the given node. Now it's time to watch it for. Oh, oh. Uh, is this just a yeah? What's the purpose of it, brain? It's giving me uh, bad flashbacks to doing my nearest neighbor algorithm, the A star pathfinding thing in the hexagon uh, game thing that we did before. Uh, set up the health component. I mean, I feel like set up health component should have that inside of it, probably. Although, although this isn't a constructor, typically we don't call logic in a constructor. But it's working at the moment, so... To be honest, if we've created it, it is probably is safe to do. I'm going to whack it in there. No, because we need the object initializer. No, we are not. I was a fool. Okay, that's fine. What did I actually want to know in here was the... Uh, is controller following status idle, that one? We got a begin play that caches the controller. That's fine. Set up that reset pawn unimplemented at the moment. Um, move to location this bit. Okay, so this just checks the path following. Okay, so that is still correct. Okay, and then we do prepare pawn, which calls set up pawn sprite, which is defined in the subclass. So we should have prepare pawn. Where is it? Actually, maybe we don't have any more looking at this. Uh, get pawn name, that's fine. Push controller. Okay, that's fine too. Self component. Yeah. Okay, on killed. Uh, on on take non fatal damage is unable to fight. It's not the most intuitive reason why we do that, but I think I understand why you take the damage and then you can on dead fish. So on non fatal damage, yeah. So they kind of tied together. I also don't like that I've got on dead visuals complete and then on killed. Uh, it's just not the best, but whatever. Build succeed. Interesting, he says. Uh, when generating a procedural map, I want to place a mystery event, for example, and that event has related nodes. Yeah, so I thought it was. You'd like, place something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know, that was one of the things that crossed my mind when you said it. That, that's cool. Nice, man. It's a nice way to try and, like, set a bit of balance on your map as well, right? You can make sure that there's not too much of a cluster of certain stuff. Okay, uh, so we we know we don't have this prepare function anymore, do we? Oh, we do. We do. It's right at the start. Set the pawn sprite. Should done in the. Okay, so it was correct. Okay, we can we can really condense this. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, overridden get the sprite for adventurers set user data get user data oh there is we should also notice has the dead logic right so so where does this come from like on killed would come from 
Hmm. I guess I don't like that we're calling it. We should probably call that like kill porn instead. Because on kill makes it sound like it's responding to an event. Uh, let's just double check how we're using that to make sure. Yeah, we don't actually call it. Do we, no, we must call it from somewhere. Maybe we... Oh, yeah, we do. We do. We call it from... Uh, in the adventure porn. You can get killed. So, if, Yeah, so I think we should rename it I, I think i'm happy with that let's go ahead and rename it so i said i'll shift r rename it to kill porn let's do that okay i, I prefer that i think we've still got the same thing here on tech yeah i think it I think I want to reserve using the on word. Like on dead visuals complete makes sense because you're reacting to. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, that would imply you've got a delicate call visuals complete. So maybe not again. You might be able to hear the birdies tweeting outside at the moment as well. I'm just going to try and talk whenever they're talking. So let's go into this and rename this as well to take non-fatal damage. Um, so play dead visuals. Is blueprint implementable? That's why we're not we've got them. I'm wondering, is it worth rename? Like surely we, it shouldn't be an issue if you rename a function here. Uh, so I'm going to purely out of it might be a good idea for us to close this first though yeah it may be dead is right actually here yeah. once you get killed you are then dead yeah yeah okay and i don't mind i don't mind that so much we play the dead uh visuals and then we go ahead and dead, dead visuals complete so this is a blueprint callable function so this, we're going to rename. We're going to try and avoid point on in until we need it, as I said. And same here, we're going to rename this one to non-fatal damage visuals complete. Okay, if you remember, this is what was causing one of the bugs last week as well. Once you are killed, you are then dead. Thank you. Thank you, yes. We are the science today. We're dropping knowledge that people weren't prepared for. So we, we need to add that to this just to state that it uh, handles uh, receiving damage and death. Great. Okay, now as for these. We don't need that call within prepare porn because we know it does that already, right? I'd imagine that's from the lookup table as well, right? Adventurer P A W N. So yeah, a couple of things in here that we can we can add as well. So it binds to the on hit. Yeah, which is quite important as well, right? Let's just pick up these quickly first. I mean, that's not. We really don't need to. That doesn't need to, we don't need to know about that. 
Okay, so what what else is actually in here then? We have combat component. We don't actually use the active combat component at the moment. Why are we doing it in post initialized components, I wonder? And the idea was that we could whack a combat component onto any on the different pawns or, or whatever to, in order to allow them to fight in different ways so that the combat isn't tied to the pawn it's you can put that pawn in different environments that was the idea i wish i didn't have to call everything pawn all the time mm -hmm. Why are we casting that here? Oh, is it because this is a generic one? New compact component. No, but we're getting it like that. I really don't. Oh, it's an actor component. Of course. Okay, okay. Okay, yeah, we can we can leave that for now then. Uh, so the adventure pawn also has a... I don't know if I, I need to note it because it's it's we're not using it yet. Your chair is a combat component. Yeah, you tell me. You so mad. Love that sassitude. Thank you very much. Welcome back. Did you get the things done? I hope so. So this is more important. Uh, is that we bind to the bind to adventure. Stop being italicized. <clears throat> And then we, so th this bit here, we can do that in the same line. It's a mess, but we're not using it uh, on the outside of that scope. And it's not a member, so that's totally fine. Okay, so that's not a, a big deal. Setting up the, the pawn sprite here. This is where, assuming it's already been set, right? Yeah, that we've got our user. Okay, so. This is an interesting one. Compare it to that. Hmm. I mean, why don't I just use that anyway? I, d I don't know why I do a, s a different rule to check that it's not default kingdom, but whatever. Uh, well, let's address this in the future to do. Okay. I guess it's trying to do out if they're not in a kingdom, then don't put the kind of guild brackets around it. Okay, so. Then we go ahead and get our sprite sheet from our settings. It's a data asset here. Yeah, that's all good. And then we find the right one based on the uh, ID. And then if there's a selected one, We should probably fire out a um, error here uh, to find a sprite of the character. Outfit ID, let's do that instead. Outfit ID. We do our, what do you call it? Oh man, I've been doing too much C sharp recently. If I want to concatenate this together, can we, I th guess we can just do an F text from string possibly. 
Actually, no, it's because it's text we need to do that. I think we can, can you just add stuff together? ID, I assume, is a... Uh, is it a string? ID is... I'm so confused. Oh, it's because they've written at the end. Okay, okay. Just an ad symbol, is it, Brain? I'm used to doing the dollar sign and the little thingy after doing Alicia's bot for a while. Okay, so e adventure type is actually an enum. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that nasty thing with the printing. I know what you mean. To turn it into like a char array, right? I don't know whether it'll let us do a two string on the enum. I, I hate printing enums, if I'm honest with you. And we'll just see what happens. See if it can pass first. If not, it's not that important. We can just debug it and find it. It shouldn't happen often. Okay, so it, that's fine. Looks it up. And it looks it up from our game, uh, where is it? Over to get the sprite from, from uh, dev settings. That's fine. We bind to the on hit event. And... Yeah, it's not the printing enums I have a problem, it's the printing enums in Unreal CPP. Makes me sad. Yeah, can you see here? Doesn't like doing that. I wonder whether you can do a two string. Uh, if not, I wonder if we can uh, cast it to an int and then do it to string. Because I, I don't want the enum name of it. I'm okay not to have the enum name. We can look it up. Nope. Can we just do a hard like that? I don't know the answer. Go on, work for me. I just want a number. Yeah, yeah. I I give up if this one doesn't work. Yeah, uh, string printf. No overload found. Where you taking a parameter that is an integer? All right, I don't care enough. Oh, brain, you're giving it to me. So cast it to an int and then. <laughs> oh, this is disgusting. we go the magic um no part of it may be because of how i've done my macro as well um yeah i don't care enough right now so we're gonna just move on thank you though for helping okay Oh, I think it is a static cast, actually, Brain, you're right. But, right, okay, no, never mind for now, never mind for now. Oh, well, it, it, I just realized. We've already got an error, but it's not quite the same one. Uh, okay, that's fine, blah, 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 blah. We don't need to go through all of this, set it. Okay, on adventure collision. So this is where we handle the combat logic, right? Yeah, so let's put in a a, a bookmark here. So this is going to be our pawn overlap logic. Let's just say adventure. Okay. No, no, no. You keep me trying for a good reason, Mr. Brain. It's not a, a, a problem. 
This is where we have, if it's a monster, do this. This is a proper clunk, but to be honest, it's fine. Um... So if they're not dead, and they're not unable to fight, then if the monster's not dead or not able to fight, then we want to stop their movement. We cache the monster that we're colliding with. And then we roll the dice. We get the monster difficulty. This is something I need to uh, look at, actually. Uh, ch -ch -ch. You know, instead of overlap logic, I think it might be better to just have, actually, um, what it actually does. Uh, so this would be our... To come here, we call it dungeon combat for now. This is the thing where we do the take the damage and all that. We don't have to follow all this through. I love that a comment called take damage, and then there's a function called take damage underneath it. Good one. Okay, so this, and this one is more for our room events, I guess, right? On room event begin, it'd probably be in there instead that we, we follow that through. Okay. Um, call it that yes Elisha I did see the um, the news we had a uh, I posted on my discord earlier because we had a, a work-based flicks uh, sorry four guys tournament the other day and a few people bought the game just for it and they were just saying oh we've got an exciting announcement next week and I like social media guy was just like I bet they make it free after a few people have just bought this Yeah, it's it's a bit of a kick in the teeth for people who've just bought it. But other than that, it'd be nice if they could give something. If anyone who's bought it can get some in-game currency, I think that would be a nice way to do it. I haven't seen the full announcement, though. Um, if... Uh, why are we not okay do we not use this does this not exist anymore if so we delete it right it's commented out okay we bind to it in the progress dungeon state right and it's in the adventure we bind to it I don't know if we actually do anything in here, do we? No, we don't. But maybe I thought there'd be a good reason for it. Like when you, maybe there's yeah, so should we be broadcasting it or just not using it? I don't like the idea, but it's not like something I definitely want to get rid of. So let's do it to um, utilize or remove this. Oh, we don't have the event anymore. Cached Adventure. Where, where does that... Oh, it's on the sprite pawn now. That is why. 
Okay, now we now I know why we got. Why didn't I just delete that then? So is this in here? No. Okay, we don't actually use it in there. Okay. So what we can do here then? Uh, it's fired from the. We don't need to see where it's fired from, but uh, within our a adventure one here, we do that instead. Hopefully this is protected, not private, so we do have access to it, and public even, wonderful. Got a bit of fink on at the moment, Brainite. Also, some fink was in the TV show, watch me, I think it was uh, Better Call Saul, and I was like, I bet this is fink, Alicia, it was a song I'd not heard. She looked it up, and it's like, pow. It's as if he's recognisable. Probably be able to request a refund. Do you, do you think? Do you think so? I did buy it like two years ago. No, it can't be that long now. Well, actually, it might be. Mikey, time is gone. What is your uh, closed captions solution? Uh, Alicia, is, I think she set it up in here, but it's just something that's in OBS, and it does it automatically for you. I think. And then the, it enables the CC plugin, the automatic one. I don't, I don't know if it was an actual plugin or whether it's just part of this. Alicia can answer that. Although I spelled Alicia's name wrong, so uh, whew, maybe out of respect to her name, she won't. However, I'm glad to see that uh, Fall Guys is free because Fall Guys is. They've got custom lobbies now, and if you can get around 12 players, you can do a bunch of fun game modes on it. So it'd be good for a community night. Maybe we can join forces, Alicia, one night and do like a joint one uh, so that we have enough people. Okay, that is all good. Dead visuals complete. This is where we do separate ones. Da, 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 da. Yeah, that's all good. What's this? Update UI dungeon run info. Has it been called from the adventure board? I wonder. Oh, that's meant to be as it's running, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that's what the idea is. So as you collect something that it can update the UI to say, oh, you've just collected gold. Yeah, yeah, I, I like I like that idea. We didn't uh, uh, kind of communicate that very well before. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, get current adventure. We update. Oh, we only do it the once. Blast. And we only do it in the set of dungeons. So we set the health and we set the user of them. Once we've got it. So update UI dungeon run info. It just feels weird that we're doing it from here. Where would be a better place to do it? I, I feel we've got other places where we do, like this here we're setting the ui it just feels weird that it exists there i feel like we should be passing the adventurer in to a function that does it rather than it the adventure being responsible for updating the UI, that really feels like we're coupling the UI and the adventure together, which probably shouldn't be happening. Uh, on our HUD here, I feel like that might be a better place to do it. Let's add this as a to-do. Move this function somewhere more sensibly, sensible uh, in the container widget called in the set dungeon state perhaps okay
Yeah, we passed the user here, right? We passed the whole thing across. I don't know. That might be old. Because we pressed the user across. Well, we've already got this. I, yeah, I'm... Set health. I, I might do this now, even. I feel like it... Dungeon run info widget. That's all we got to do, right? So if we go into where we actually call this... Uh, we've got a container widget in here, right? So in here, we can say, have we got a container widget? Not cached one, we just do container widget. I think uh, the reason I was doing it is I thought that during the run, we might want to update it. But I still feel that the adventurer, should they be updating their own widget with that stuff? I'm not 100%, they, they should be. So I'm going to stick with this for now. I feel like the UI or a state can listen to events on the adventurer and then update the UI rather than the adventurer knowing about it directly. So set health and we don't know our adventurer health at this point, right? So I think we can just do get health that we got. Why is it not? Is it public? Everything's public or done. Although we did have a health component, maybe that's why I just added it quickly. All right, let's just uh, do that for now. No, it's not. Why is it not auto complete for me? It stresses me out. Okay. The pyramid. We all love the pyramid of if statements. Punch mm -mm -mm -mm. an adventurer. And we want to get the AHA, whatever it was, right? The F. I think we've just got to get user data. Yes, that's what we want. Okay. <laughs> it's all good. Don't you worry about it, Polarin. We could do some early returns, but it doesn't, it's not too important right now. Okay. Uh, let's go back to where we were then. We're in here. And that, that should mean actually that in our adventurer pawn, we don't actually need this anymore. So we're going to delete it. And then that makes me think, do we need the cached? Container widget. Oh, yeah, update UI health. Let's at least get rid of this. We get, we'll leave that. Still not a big fan of it there. Oh, I don't like it. And I don't like how well, I've changed. Uh, okay, let's not. The alternative we can do is just call this both of these. But it, it's still, it, it's basically just going back to what we were doing. Uh, 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know anymore. To, to be honest, I will just change it back to what it was, I think. Oh, uh, it was actually right how it was. Oh, this irks me. Change it. And I think that us having this out was the right thing to do as well. Oh my gosh, this is a pain. So this should actually go inside of here in a separate one. Just because you might not have a, a dungeon adventure but still want to set the UI bit there. I think. Uh, uh oh. Uh oh, what's happened here, eh? All right, that was all literally for nothing. Never mind. Never mind. I don't need to rework all of that flow at the moment. Let's go back to our adventure and go through. Mm -mm. So we had our collision of a way to update. That's what we were looking at anyway, right? Yeah, th this being in the... This is too coupled to... I don't like that. Because we are going to use this adventure porn base class for just not dungeon adventures, but the ones in the world or quest ones as well, right? So we need to change that in the future. The song. Doo -doo -doo -doo. This is fine. Get, get home location. Uh, okay. This this is a to do for future as well. Update gold. So does this get called when we open a chest? I'm wondering why are we not changing our gold in the struct at that point? We're just broadcasting it. Oh, is it because the dungeon run tracks it? Yeah, that's what it is. So update gold is called here when we open a uh, yeah a room event. If it's a chest one, then we open up the chest. Essentially empty. I mean, it's not empty though, I think. Okay. Why is this not called? Can I do this last week? Why did I comment it out though? I don't like that. Did we get rid of it? Still exists. Uh, while I'm here quickly, let's go and have a look how we... Did we get rid of that last week? What's it called? Chess CPP. Go and have a look. I feel like we may have. Uh, 
Where are we at? 95. Okay. No, we didn't change it. Wonder why that is. Why are we not calling that? Because you'd kind of expect it based on the flow of the other one. So let's go and have a look at the um, monster event, maybe. Or let's, let's just look for this elsewhere. That would help me remember other classes that implement this. Okay, ignore the generated files. We have our monster. Yeah, that doesn't call it either. That doesn't do anything though, I guess. Oh, crikey, half ideas are not always the best, are they? Dungeon consumable. Okay, on room event and blueprint. I think that is the right thing to to call. I was just wondering why we why we did that. We'll find out. Anyway, that was distraction. We were in here updating the gold. So yeah, we were trying to figure out why why would uh, we be doing update gold via this. So we bind to it here. We actually bind to it twice. Or. Oh, uh, we unbind. Okay, yeah, that, that totally makes sense. On adventure, gold updated, current gold earned. Okay, yeah, that, that makes sense. Okay. Because really, the the dungeon will be able to... Doing it that way makes it healthier, because we can bind to the adventurer's events, and the adventurer can shout when stuff happens. That means the dun when you interact with something, you can, it can tell the thing that's interacted with it, rather than having to go into the dungeon and figure out what state we're in, and whether we need to pass information across or not. So, uh, yeah, I think it, it's fine the way we've got that. So we could add then that it uh, reacts to, uh, uh, I don't want to call it on gold updated, where are you, Sprite? No, adventure. Ooh. Update gold, update fame. So reacts to update gold fame from events and broadcasts to the state. I guess it is, right? Yeah, that's fine. Start attack. So it has a bunch of attack logic in here. And again, we feel that this should be moved out probably. To do move out into separate combat component. Or oh, remove or. This is when we're using behavior trees, I guess, initially. On attack finished. Okay, take damage is actually used still. Update the health. Get knocked backwards and get rid of that comment there. Yeah, where does where does that actually happen? They're getting knocked backwards. It'd be in taking on fatal damage, I guess, right? I think it used to knock you back, but we got rid of it, yeah, here. Yeah, let's... Adventure damage received. I'll do that. Oh, 
Okay, get user data is fine. Do we not have a just get user data? Oh no, because yeah, a, a sprite porn doesn't have it. Adventure porn is the one that will have it, right? And monsters have a different bit of data. Yeah, that makes sense. Enum to string. Look at this beautiful method, uh, Brainoid. <laughs> you can tell I've copy pasted it from somewhere because it it's an if statement without curly braces. Get assassinated. Won't that happen if you on take damage anyway? Take damage if the health is now zero, kill pawn. Play dead vision. No, it doesn't stop it. Oh, it's because they've stopped already. Maybe we can just drop it in into there instead, because I feel like get assassinated. It was me trying to figure out what was going on before, but really it shouldn't be a different branch in logic just for that. So I think we should probably take this first off and uh, let's go kill pawn in here. Ah, it's sprite pawn. They're not all going to have a movement component, I don't think. Oh, they do. Um, do we want to? Because we're basically relying on the room, uh, the, like the dungeon state machine is in the room progression to stop the movement. Where really it should be if you die, the movement stops, right? But it's tricky because you get the flow, the way that it works, the dungeon room kind of manager thing is like moving things through. It is in control of saying, okay, you move there now. It's not like the adventure choosing its own way through. So it's not completely wrong that they stop its movement. I think for now what we'll do is we will drop it in here. We'll stop the movement there and then we'll call kill. So then whenever we kill, call this, get assassinated. I think that this is still fine. It's not the end of the world. We're still calling that function. The main thing here is we're, we're for taking max health, right? Yeah, and we might want to do more at that point, such as change stats. Um, which is on my to-do list. We have a to-do list in here. Uh, add assassination stats on the payload. Yeah. Okay. Um, that is probably fine. I feel this should move, like, maybe to do move to a function library. Oh. Rather than having it tied into here. Because it's not actually tied to this, right? Okay, cool. So what did we learn about our beautiful sprite porn? React to gold fame events, it does. Um, it manages death as well. This handles my, uh, death, so we don't need to state that in there. I guess we could just say overrides, take damage, events. Uh, function logic okay and then we have our monster one to wrap up all right quick one let's go into the monster just see what it says it done over and get this right for the monsters yeah that's fine 
uh, set monster data. Yeah, I, don't, I think we don't really need to say that. I, uh, yeah, that is interesting as well. What's the difficulty? Also, get engaged with the adventurer. Uh, no, we're not doing that anymore. Okay, on room event end. I don't think anything happens at the moment. So this is like if they killed. I think this is now handled in the in the uh, adventure instead. Yeah, let's let's double check that. It does make sense for it to be done in the monster, really, in this kind of event flow. Hmm. Because I think if we have a like a deal damage, don't we? Oh, actually, no, 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 no. It's in here, isn't it? Take damage, kill pawn in here. Oh, that just. How do we know that the event is over then? Hmm. Room event begin blueprint. On room end. Yeah, th so this is where we. The, these are meant to be implemented differently. If we go to the other ones. Uh, in chest and uh, consumable. Yeah, can you see we've got this logic in here? So let's let's jump back. And let's see, do we set this elsewhere? So we don't need this stuff, right? Oh, hold on, hold on. Oh, did we just cop? Maybe we do need all of this. It's exactly the same logic. But is it just we're not? Oh, so uh, we're passing true with it, right? Is this a one pram then? Where is this defined? Oh, cracky. Come on, come on. Mm -hmm. Um, this was successful. Okay. So was it success? Right. So this is what this is for. Is just like it was a successful room if because of that, right? Do we broadcast this anywhere else? I'm wondering. No. Hmm. So I I need to work out where when we kill a monster how the how do we know that the room is finished because we might be doubling up on it. It might be um I mean, it was, is cleanup being called elsewhere? Let's comment that out a sec, right? Let's get a dungeon run going and let's just have a look what happens. I, I Part of me feels like it's in the... When they're taking damage and stuff. Uh, on room... Oh, if I just not made, ah, uh, okay. That's not a standard part of the interface. Okay, okay, okay. Um, that's why we don't call this. 
but should it be part of an interface? Uh, anyway, that's not the point right now. Let's try that again. And we do need to wrap up shortly, ladies and gents. Bridge. Oh, it's not compiling again. How dare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Update UI dungeon run info. Oh, did I delete it from the right there? That should do the job. Looks like there might be some more errors. It's probably where I copy pasted from one thing to another. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're getting through. Come on. It takes a pointer, please. Ah, am I using a reference? Passing in a ref instead, is it? Uh, no, no, no. Please, no, I'm, I'm passing in a pointer. Please use the construct. No, 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 I'm not. Okay, so we should probably fix those up. Did it finish? It did. Should we fix those up? I have to have a look at the rooms next time or uh, before next stream. I'll do it. Let's see if we got rid of those warnings as well, eh? I don't like that. I've got a gap there. Okay, good. Let, let's uh, launch this. I, we're going to run over slightly, but that's okay. Uh, while we're waiting, I could get the old. Uh, Oh man, I've not updated it for a while. We could get the old, uh, this thing going. Right there. The IP. Raid, that's the one. We can go through this. Oh wow, look at this. It's highly professional. Highly professional. Let's give this a, a shot. Uh, open the suggestions. Uh, if you want to suggest someone to raid, you can go ahead and use the suggest command. Someone who's live, who's uh, we kind of like. So I'll put in Tim Pudet. I'll also put in uh, First Crimson. So anyone wants to suggest anyone, go ahead and do so. Okay. So. Okay, we've got compile errors in these. Let's open both of these up. Yeah, see, that's what renaming the function. Can you refresh it? Will it work if we refresh? Dead visual complete. Nope. I hate it. So this is non-fatal. Okay, that should hopefully fix that one up for us. Okay, I will suggest someone else for the third person to go for a rural. So at least we've got three then. Mm -hmm. 
And let's bump up the time for some votes for, for uh, probably need a few minutes. So let's go three minutes. So feel free to vote who you'd prefer to raid out of us, the people who are on the screen. Okay, let's press play. Shouldn't have done it in this screen. Uh, we can close these now. So we want to see when an, uh, an adventurer is killed. Does it call the dead? No? What, what makes them disappear then? That's what I'm curious about. Thank you for your votes. There's still two minutes left if anyone else wants to vote for who we're going to raid. It looks like first Crimson at the moment. Cleanup. So cleanup isn't called on it. So where is the monster destroyed? Alright, we can find out this way, I think. Our spacey's in a dungeon where... No, it didn't let me assassinate. Oh, I just typed in ass, that's why. What sort of game doesn't give you ass, huh? What is this? <laughs> Spacey. <laughs> Thanks for a reminder. Okay, so let's see where this happens from. Okay, so kill porn comes from... Take damage. Oh yeah, of course, on an adventure collision. So at what point does it get destroyed? I did visuals and then it must finish them, right? I guess we don't want to kill it immediately because it needs to like fall over, right? We don't destroy though, right? When do they get destroyed? They m <laughs> Okay, okay, wait, 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 wait. Have we got an end play in here? We don't have an end play either. Damn it all. I don't, I don't know where the monster's destroyed. Oh dear, looks like Tim has had some connection issues as well. All right, well, we're over end of stream time. I'm going to have to have a little peep at this. Uh, so let's write a, a message as, as we start the raid. So uh, we're going to go ahead and raid first Crimson. Thank you very much for voting, peeps. Uh, we've got a minute or so until we do so. If you want to copy the raid message, go ahead and do so uh, from there. Uh, okay, let, let's... Uh, write some notes on what we've done let's close this down i'll have to have a look at it downstairs uh or another day uh in here so uh cleaned up uh written notes uh written uh flow logic um on the so the dungeon dungeon states uh we had the game mode and then the sprite pawns, including the adventurer and monster. Still need to figure out what destroys the monster and why it's not handled in the I monster, uh, uh, like on event end function of the monster. Uh, next up, 
we need to go through the loom, uh, the room 